Howdy folks, it's Howie here, Howie Cat, and I'm going to delve into what is a lesson in comic books. Not really into the history of comic books and creation of comic books or any of that. It's a, this is a book that is essentially comics for dummies. It is understanding comics. It is the textbook on reading comic books. A lot of you um, have found my channel through many different ways. Uh, you're enjoying some of the stories about the books, but you don't know how to read them. Don't worry. that's <laughs> Nobody does. Um, you don't know at first. Uh, if you're like me, you grew up reading them, and it's instinctual after a while, even though you still don't know. But this is a compendium that will really... It's a, uh, a textbook written as a comic book. Um, and we're going to go through the first chapter and read it. Hopefully it's not too long, hopefully it's not stupid, and hopefully you uh, find it as entertaining as me. It's one of the greatest books on the subject ever written. So we're going to go with Setting the Record Straight, uh, which is kind of uh, just telling you what they are. It's the introduction. My old pal Matt Fiesel called the other day. See, it's written as a comic, and this is the author here, the guy with the plaid shirt and glasses. And he wrote a book called Zap. He's a pretty big deal. My old pal, Matt Fiesel, called the other day. So, S Scott McLeod is the author. Okay, so just so establishing a few things. So, and he is a character in his own book. So, Scott, what's your next project going to be now? Now that you've finished Zot, which was his big hit. Well, it's a bit hard to describe, Matt. It's a sort of comic book about comics. You mean like a history? Not exactly, no, no. Although there is some history in it, it's more of an examination of the art form of comics. What it's capable of, how it works. You know how we define comics? What are the basic elements of comics? How does the mind process the language of comics? That sort of thing. I have a chapter on closure. All about what happens between the panels. There's one how time flows through the comics. Another on the interaction of words and picture storytelling. I haven't put together a new comprehensive theory of creative process. And its implications for comics and for art in general. Oh. Oh. Um, aren't you kind of young to be doing this sort of thing? <laughs> so here we go. Understanding comics. That was the introduction to the book. That's what he's doing. Um, we're going to learn about comic books. Chapter one, setting the record straight. <laughs> hi, Scott. Or hi, I'm Scott McLeod. And he's at his drawing board in his office. When I was a little kid, I knew exactly what comics were. We all did. But they're not. Comics were those bright, colorful magazines filled with bad art, stupid stories, and guys in tights. I read real books, naturally. I was much too old for comics. But when I was in eighth grade, a friend of mine, who was a lot smarter than I was, convinced me uh, to give comics another look. And lent me his collection. Soon I was hooked. He's reading uh, the really old X-Men. Which is just an X-Men, but it's old. In less than a year, I became totally obsessed with comics. I decided to become a comics artist in 10th grade and began to practice, practice, practice. It's actually a good shadow reference there if you don't know uh, I felt that there was something lurking in comics something that had never been done some kind of hidden power sure I realized that comic books were usually crude poorly drawn semi-literate cheap disposable kitty fare but they don't have to be oh, I misread this I am so sorry 
this was next, but whatever, tried to explain it. You know, he failed trying to explain what they were. They don't have to be bad. The problem was that for most people, that was what comic book meant. Don't give me that comic book talk, Barney. If people understand to, or people fail to understand comics, it was because they defined what comics could be too narrowly. And I do run into that on YouTube, in life, everywhere, trying to explain what I read. So let's go on some more. A proper definition, if one would find one, uh, if, one if, we, if we could find one, might give lie to the stereotypes and show that the potential of comics is limitless and exciting. This is where our journey begins. So we're going to learn about what comics can be. This is a great panel here, I think. Oh, get the world of comics is huge and varied. One, our definition must encompass all these types. If you look at the world, you've got, like, Thing, you've got Ignatz, you've got Tim Tim, you've got Batman. I mean, you've got every Peanuts. I mean, it is all a, a world of comics. Uh, Ziggy and all kinds of stuff. The whole world. While not being so broad as to include anything which is clearly not comics. This is how we got to figure out what comics are and what comics are not. Comics is the... And this is one... Uh, actually, if Pink's listening. Pink has asked me this. What is a comic? Where's the word come from? I really couldn't tell her that answer, but we're going to work on this definition with Scott here. Comics is the word worth defining. As it refers to the medium itself not a specific object as a comic book or a comic strip do. We can all visualize a comic. But what is comics? Master comics artist Will Eisner uses the term sequential art when describing comics. Taken individually, the pictures below are merely that pictures and then we have a man holding a touching his hat a sun a gun going bang a clock and an eye well, that's all we're looking at here i don't know if you saw the eye but whatever you you know now however when you when part of a sequence even a sequence of two um the art of the image is transformed into something more the art of comics it's very simple stuff, but they're comics. They tell tiny stories. The man's holding his hat, lifts his hat. Sun's here, sun's down. Bang and a scream. The clock moves. An eye is open and an eye is closed. Now, these are what comics are, um, essentially. I mean, we're going to learn so much more. But this is really the basics when you're reading the panels and how time passes. And so we go back up to here. Notice that the definition is strictly neutral in matters of style, quality, or subject matter. Much has already been written on various schools of comic art, of particular artists, particular titles, particular trends. But to define comics, we must first do a little aesthetic surgery and separate form from content. The art form, the medium, known as comics, is a vessel which can hold any number of ideas and images. And um, a comic vessel is the picture and inside are writers, artists, trends, genres, styles, subject matter, themes. The content of those images and ideas is, of course, up to creators. And we all have different tastes. Taste a drink. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, the trick is to never mistake the message for the messenger. That's a good point. Because just because that drink from the pitcher does not mean every drink from the pitcher will be bad. 
At one time or another, virtually all the great media have received critical examination in and of themselves. Eisner's own comics and sequential art being a happy exception. <laughs> and you have the written word, music, uh, videos, film, visual art, theater, all of them have their own vessels and all of them can be good, bad, indifferent. Depends on what is in the vessel. But for comics, this attention has been rare. And it really has. Uh, let's see if we can help uh, rectify the situation. To me, yeah, people just kind of look at comics as all the same. So we're working on this. This is really the intro, so it's not going to be super great, but it's good. It's good stuff. Eisner's term seemed like a good place to start. Let's see if we can expand it to a proper dictionary style definition. Any ideas? He has a crowd here. He's at an audience. and We're all going to brainstorm and come up with an idea of what this is. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of art. How about something a little more specific? So sequential art is not quite enough. Okay, how's this? Sequential visual art. This music could be art. Hey, what about animation? Just beg pardon? Isn't animated film just visual art in sequence. Hmm, good point. I guess the basic difference is that animation is sequential in time, but not spatially juxtaposed as comics are. He explains juxtaposed. I trust you people to know that word. Um, each successive frame of a movie is projected on exactly the same space of the screen, while each frame of comics must occupy a different space. Space does for comics what time does for film. However, you might say that before it's projected, a film is just a very, very, very slow comic. I didn't show you that. It's down the... And it really is. If you were to look at each panel of a film, yeah, it's just a slow comic. Anyway, this should make it a bit more specific. Juxtaposed sequential visual art. Does it have to say art? Doesn't that imply some sort of value judgment? Okay, how about this? juxtapose sequential static images. Now it sounds kind of arbitrary. Okay, how about this? Juxtapose static images in deliberate sequence. What about words? I'm trying to get this in the camera every time. I hope I am doing well. Um, I hope you can see what we're reading. Oh, it doesn't have to contain words to be comics. No, no, I mean, doesn't that definition describe words? Huh? Letters are static images, right? When they're arranged in a deliberate sequence, placed next to each other, we call them words. You tell them, Bob. <laughs> Silliness. Our lecture's getting silly. Yeah, we're going long. Okay, how does this sound? Juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence. It's really hard to define comics, really. Uh, what about Batman? Shouldn't that Batman in it? <laughs> Who let him in? <laughs> okay, they just put a silly in there. Uh, no, I meant it. And what about the X-Men? And ow, hey, hey, let go of me. They're taking him out. Okay. Well, anyway, this should do for now. We'll just type it up, add a little bit of the uses of comics, and there. The definition is comics. Plural. Noun, it's a plural in form used with singular verb. One, juxtapose pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or to produce an aesthetic response to the viewer. I admit this isn't the sort of thing that comes up in a lot of casual conversation. Well, it doesn't, it kind of does for me, but I can't, I never think of those things, you know. I just like try to describe what comics are to people like sometimes I can't I, it's asked me it's asked of me often I can say that 
and in most cases, this is the only definition we're likely to need. But without a specific definition under our belts, perhaps we, uh, but with a specific, with a specific, my goofed, definition under our belts, perhaps we can shed some new light on the history of comics. Most books about comics begin shortly before the turn of the century. But I can think but I think we can venture a bit further than that. So most comic books are around 1900. Or books that are close to them. But we can go back. We can. We can go back quite a bit. Actually, a lot further. He's going back to the 1500s and to hieroglyphics. Here's just a piece of epic story contained in a pre-Columbian picture manuscript discovered by Cortez around 1519. This 36 foot long, brightly colored painted screen fold uh, screen fold tells the great military and political hero B. Deer Tiger's Claw. Is it comics? You bet it is. We can even read some. And it's footnoted here, or Ocelot's Claw, depending on whose book you read. Um, I mean, you know, it's not necessarily always the same. So here's one of the first comics ever. First, we separate words from pictures. Uh, B tier, Tiger's Claw, a name, 11 house, 12 monkey date, God, uh, XB's bundle. A glyph for a place whose name we don't know. So then I reversed it and straightened it out. The original read right to left and zigzagged and began. In the year 1049 AD. The date, May 3rd, exact place right here. Uh, our hero, B. Deer, Tiger's Claw, conquers the place and captures the nine-year-old prince, Four Wind Serpent of Fire. Eight Deer also captures the prince's older brothers, Ten Dog, Eagle, Copal, Burning, and Six House Row of Flint Knives, and puts them on ice. And he says, I'm taking the translator's word on this. Oh my, I, I can't translate that myself either. Uh, following year, B Deer and probably his brother, disguised as gladiatorial combat with the prince, it, Ten Dog, and another warrior disguised as death. Eight Deer kills the other uh, prince, Six House, Row of Flynn Knives, eight days later. We know the year. I'm guessing the date represented by 12 monkeys. He's kind of looking at that, you know, looking at his class as if... So, we're getting an idea. Are comics books or comics... A thing? No, they're just a story told in a way. Hundreds of years before Cortez began collecting comics, France began, or France produced the strikingly familiar work we call the Beutex Tapestry. This 230-foot-long tapestry details the Norman conquest of England, beginning 1066. Reading left to right, we see the events of the conquest in deliberate chronological order. And you do see the conquest happening as the um, unfold before our very eyes. And with the Mexican Codex, there are no panel borders per se, but there are clear divisions of scene by subject matter. There's actually a whole chapter on borders. It's, to me, it's fascinating, so... Um, far from disqualifying these as comics, I think modern comic book artists should take note of the possibilities of such whole-page compositions and how few artists have made good use of them since. Which one is the prince? Because they're kind of looking at... Uh, perennial exception is Will Eisner. He's He's... Will Eisner is one of the greatest comic artists of all time. And he keeps telling that. Everything's an exception, you know, of Will Eisner. Finding comics beyond our millennium is a bit trickier. 
thus their real descendant in the written word and not comics. Oh, he's, you know, and, uh, sometimes I, it looks like it, I can't tell for sure if it's supposed to be read that way. It's read here. Uh, for, you know, even I have trouble sometimes with any book. Um, I think it's there. Follow the souls of the East, praise the, the souls of the West. Egyptian painting is another matter. Some, would you look for me? I'm this. This is a teach. Uh, this panel goes from page to page. Generally, almost always, that means the rest of the book should go this way. Now, this panel stops here. You go here. That's actually, you know, something people don't know, and I sometimes will do that. Go here to here, which was wrong. Uh, Egyptian painting is another matter. Some of these may seem to be concerned with the sequence, but are actually showing two different locations, events, and casts grouped only by subject. At first glance, Egyptian hieroglyphics would seem to fit our definition perfectly. <coughs> um, but much depends on our use of the word pictorial. I'm using it to indicate at least some resemblance to the subject, but these glyphs represent only sounds, not unlike our alphabet. I had been trying to find sequence in Egyptian paintings for years when I began this book and was ready to call it quits, until I discovered that the books I had been using as reference only have been showing part of the picture. Here's the complete scene painted over 32 centuries ago for the tomb of Mena, an ancient Egyptian scribe. As would be done 2,700 years ago, later in Mexico, the Egyptians read their comics zigzag. Going up this time, so it would go. Starting at the lower left, we see the three workers reaping wheat with their sickles. Uh, painting trace for black and white reproductions. And they, it was a tracing of the paint. Uh, then carrying it in baskets to a threshing location. In the background, two girls fight over bits of wheat. You see them fighting there. Uh, left behind as the two workers sit under a tree, one sleeping, one playing the flute. The sheaves are then raked out into a thick uh, carpet of wheat. Then oxen tread kernels out of the husks. Next, peasants separate the wheat from the chaff. Old Mena himself looks on. As lo I'm, I know this sounds more... This is... Like an early comic, we're reading it. So, As lo loyal scribes record the yield on their tablets. Now an official uses measuring rope to survey the land and decide how much wheat is owed in taxes. As Mena watches, farmers late in paying their taxes are beaten. I'll gladly admit that I have no idea where or when comics originated. Let others wrestle with that one. <laughs> so they're, they're old. That's what we figured out. I've only scratched the surface on this chapter. Trajan's column, Greek painting, Japanese squirrels, all these have been suggested and all should be explored. But there is one event which looms as large as comics history, as it does in the history of the written world. The invention of printing. Have uh, some torture depicted in printed form. With the invention of printing, the art form, which had been a, division, a diversion of the rich and powerful, now could be enjoyed by everyone. And you would have to be pretty rich to own some of these tapestries and stuff. Now anyone can own some comic art. 
popular tastes haven't changed much in five centuries. Check out the torture of St. Er- Erasmus circa 1460. Word has it, this guy was a very popular character. Um, the, f- the sophistication of the picture history, our picture story, did grow. However, reaching great heights in the nimble hands of William Hogarth. Here is a tiny piece, about one twentieth of the second plate from Hogarth's six-plate picture story, A Harlot's Progress, published in 1731. Despite the panel count, these lush rendered pictures tell a story rich in detail and motivated by strong social concerns. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say invent. Europeans were a bit late in discovering printing. Now we're at a gallery here. Um, Excuse me. We're almost done. Hogar's stories were first exhibited as a series of paintings and later sold as a portfolio of engravings. Both of the paintings and engravings were designed to be viewed side by side. As Harlot's Progress and all its sequential, and its sequential, a Rake's Progress, um, proved so popular, new copyright laws were created to protect this new form. I would say uh, also the stations, these go older, A lot of this hieroglyphics obviously go B.C. The Stations of the Cross is kind of a comic book if you've gone to a church. Anyways, the father of the modern comic in many ways is Rodolphe Toffier, whose light satiric pictures, picture stories starting in the mid-1800s, employed cartooning and panel borders and featured the first interdependent combination of words and pictures seen in Europe. Unfortunately, get this for you. Unfortunately, Tolfer himself failed to grasp at first the full potential of his invention, seeing it as a mere diversion, a simple hobby. And for the pu- future, he, Tolfer, would choose a less frivolous subject and restrict himself a little he would produce things beyond all conception. Even so, Tofier's contribution to understanding of comics is considerable, if only for his realization that he, who is neither artist nor writer, had created and mastered a form which was at once both and neither, a language all of its own. British caricature magazines kept traditions alive, and as the 20th century drew near, the comics we uh, the comics we call comics began to appear, and eventually to thrive, in a steady stream of waking dreams that has yet to abate. You can see Popeye there, and a whole bunch of the old Ignats and Crazy Cat, and all the great strips, yellow. Yellow Kid, that's a fantastic stuff. Um, but even in this century, our definition... In this century, our definition can help to illuminate the works of some unsung heroes. There it is the juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence. I'm going to go with that still. Some of our most inspired and invocative comics of our century have never received recognition as comics. Not so much in the spite of all their superior qualities, but because of them. For much of this century, the word comics has such a negative connotation that many of comics' most devoted practitioners have preferred to be known as illustrators, commercial artists, or at best, cartoonists. And so comics, low self-esteem, is self-perpetuating. 
the historical perspective necessary to counteract comics' negative image is obscured by that negativity. Woodcut artist Lynn Ward is one such missing link. Ward's silent woodcut novels are powerful modern fables now praised by comics artists but seldom recognized as comics. Artists like Ward and Belgian, Franz Mascarell, said much through their woodcuts about the potential of comics, but few of the comics community of the day could get the message. The definition of comics then, as now, was simply too narrow to include such work. Quite differently, uh, quite a different case, is Max Ernst's surreal collage novel, A Week of Kindness. It was a series of paintings that told a story. This, this 182-plate sequence of collagers is widely considered a masterpiece of 20th century art. But no art history teacher would dream of calling it comics. Yet, despite the lack of conventional story, there is no missing the central role which sequence plays in the work. Ernst doesn't want you to browse the thing. He wants you to read it. You're supposed to look at each picture in a row, much like other things we've looked at, like this. You know, I, I mentioned the stations across. You're supposed to go to each window and see the progression of the story. If we don't exclude photography from our definition, then half of America has been in comics at one time or another. You got the little strip types from the malls and all. In some countries, photo comics are, in fact, quite popular. Yes. Anyhow. Meanwhile, pictures in sequence are finally being recognized as the excellent communications tool that they are, but still, nobody refers to them as comics. Diagrams sounds more dignified. And actually, yeah, when you get on an airplane, there's a comic. The air mask comes down, put your mask on, breathe, and then help your child. That's a comic. But their illustrations, their instructions, they don't call them comics. From stained glass windows... Sh oh, <laughs> he's mentioning it. From stained glass windows showing biblical scenes in order... Uh, to Monet's series of paintings, to your car owner's manual, comics turn up all over when sequential art is employed as a definition. For all the doors that our definition opens, there is one it closes. Single panels, like this one, are, lo are often lumped in with comics. Yet there's no such thing as a sequence of one. It says, Mommy, why ain't I just deposed? <laughs> That's a cute uh, family circus goofiness. Such single panels might be classified as comic art in the sense that they deserve, uh, uh, that they derive part of their visual vocabulary from comics. But I say there are no more comics than this still of Humphrey Bogart is a film. Night bogey. They are cartoons as far as I am. As far as I and there is a long-standing relationship between comics and cartoons. But they are not the same thing. One is an approach to picture making and style if you like. While the other is a medium which employs that approach. More on this later. The same, pan the same single panel might also be labeled comics for its juxtaposition of words and pictures. You know. A great majority of modern comics do feature words and pictures in combination, and it's a subject worthy of study. But when I used a definition for comics, I found it to be a little too restrictive for my taste. Of course, if anyone wants to write a book taking the opposite view, 
you can bet I'll be the first in line to buy a copy. If comics spe spectacularly varied past is any indication, comics future will be virtually impossible to predict using the standards of the present. But in our definition, but our definition can offer us some clues. And this time, and this was written around the turn of the century, so. And this time, the secret is not in what the definition says, but what it doesn't. For example, our definition says nothing about superheroes or funny animals, nothing about fantasy, science, fiction, or reader age. No genres are listed in our definition. The types of subject matter, um, no styles of prose or poetry. Nothing is said about paper and ink. No printing process is mentioned. Printing itself isn't even specified. Nothing is said about technical pens or British board or Windsor and Newton Finest Sable Series 7 number 2 brushes. No materials are ruled out by our definitions. No tools are prohibited. There are no mentions of black lines and flat colored uh, ink. No calls for exaggerated anatomy or representational art of any kind. No schools of art are banished by our definition. No philosophies, no movements, no ways of seeing are out of bounds. I mean, how limitless the stories you can tell are. Those of you who make comics for a living or would like to someday probably know that keeping up with all the advances in today's comics is a full-time job. There are so many comics in print today that it would take an army of readers to study them all. However much, we, however much we may try to understand the world of comics around us, a part of a, that world will always lie in shadow, a mystery. I'll do my best in the following chapters to shed light on that unseen side. But, as we focus on the world of comics as it is, it should be kept in mind at all times this world is only one of many possible worlds. Our attempts to define comics are an ongoing process which won't end anytime soon. A new generation will no doubt reject whatever this one finally decides to accept and try once more to reinvent comics. And, the, and so they should. So here's to the great debate. Chapter 2. Okay, so that's um, the first chapter of this book. That was kind of a pretty deeper chapter. Some of these are more about understanding the panels and what time happened. But um, I knew this would go long. Uh, that's we got eight more chapters. If you people are interested, I will be reading it. I would be happy to read it and try and give some interpretations. What we read was a very, very much the history of comics. So, well, thank you for sitting through all of this, if you did. Um, and that's why this is a different type of comic channel. So... Hope you have fun, folks. Good night.